In this video, I'm gonna be sharing the easiest tips to merge and edit a panorama photo in Lightroom. Plus, I'm gonna be sharing some tips along the way about how to capture the best panorama photos. All that coming up. So on my screen, you see these 17 photos that I'm gonna be merging into a panorama. Now your first tip on actually taking the best panoramas is lining things up properly. In this photo, I'm doing a double tiered panorama, which just means that I'm doing a foreground and also a sky panorama merged into one. So I'm taking two rows of panoramas for this photo. Now to do this, you wanna have your horizon line located in each of the tiers. So on the bottom tier, I have it located right along the top of the frame. And then for the bottom tier, I have it lined up along the bottom. You need that because Lightroom has to find where that horizon line actually is to line things up. Now, speaking of lining things up, you also wanna line things up so that Lightroom can find edges of objects, such as having this little part of the photo in the bottom, in this photo, this one, and in that one, so it can find it in each one of those frames and line it up. I like to find an object on the left side of the frame and then move my photo so that it's also included on the right side of the frame to help Lightroom find those and merge them perfectly together. So you may be asking yourself why 17 photos? Well, I like to just give Lightroom a little benefit of error. I just like to do too much to eliminate any errors that could occur on spacing or gaps and also giving myself more room on the left and right side. Even if I don't need those photos, I can always crop it down a little bit. It's better safe than sorry. So this is really easy to do. All you have to do is select the first photo, scroll down to the last photo in the sequence, which is gonna be this one. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select that last one. Now, when you have those all selected, what you're gonna do is right click on that sequence and you're going to go to photo merge panorama. Now, when you do that, a window is gonna pop up with a lot of different options. I'm gonna take you slowly through each one of those options so that you can see exactly what they mean and how it fits best for your panorama. So here we see this pano merged perfectly together. It's lined up very well. You can always zoom in on this and kind of scroll around to be sure that everything is lined up as you want it. Now in this, you have an auto crop option. I like to check that on and off to see what it actually looks like not cropped versus auto crop. So if I deselect that, you can see where those gaps can occur in your panorama, especially if things aren't totally perfectly level on the horizon line. It's fine if they aren't, you can always crop it in. And you can see that I did leave out one photo down here that I included on the top, that's fine. I can just select auto crop and it crops it out just perfectly. Now, if it doesn't crop out perfectly in auto crop, you can always just deselect that and crop it in yourself later. Now, just real quick, if you do have a gap like this, you can always select fill edges and actually Lightroom is gonna run an AI query for you to fill those in with similar objects in those areas. Just a little tip for you. Now, next up, we have these three options for you, spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. Those are three different ways that your panorama can actually look depending on your lens. I was using a 150 to 500 lens on this pano, so they're not gonna look totally different, but if you were using something like a wide angle lens, these could have huge adjustments to how your pano actually looks, and it's worth going through each one to see which one you like best. So spherical is the one we have selected, looks pretty good. Cylindrical, I can select that, looks a little bit different, and then perspective just looks slightly different too. Again, with a telephoto lens, these aren't gonna matter that much, but with a wide angle, they make a huge difference. So click through each one and see which one works best for your pano. Now, two things that you do not want checked are auto settings and create stack. Auto settings is going to apply settings to this and auto edit it for you. While this does look good as an edit, I want full control over how the pano actually looks and I'll be editing it in Lightroom later on in this video. So I deselect that. I also don't wanna stack. I just want this to live alone as its own panorama. So I always deselect create stack. So it's pretty much that easy. All you have to do next is just hit merge and that's going to merge and create a photo in your Lightroom catalog that you can then edit. In just a second, I'm gonna to get to those edits and show you how to easily edit the best panos after they're created. But first I wanna introduce you to my course called 10 Day Landscape Photographer, where in just 10 days it takes you from not knowing anything about photography all the way to what the experts use in their photos. And this course is gonna help you take the best photos of your life through settings, composition, and 
editing your photos. It's on sale right now, so click the link below in the pinned comment and in the video description. Let's get to those edits. So here we have that merge panorama. I'm just gonna go to develop and start working on this. Now it's important to know that these edits could take longer depending on how fast your computer is because these are huge, huge image files. So we have a really good histogram up top. All I need to do basically is create a little more contrast in this. I'm gonna lift the shadows some in this as well, drop the whites and drop my blacks just slightly. And also I'm going to drop my highlights a little bit too. Now I do wanna bring out a lot more of the colors that were in the sunrise to this. So I'm gonna increase my clarity and I'm going to increase my vibrance a pretty good amount. Now I like vibrance over saturation because vibrance makes a little bit more of a subtle color color change versus what saturation does to a photo. Now that I see what this has done, I can always come in here and increase my shadows just a little bit more to bring those out. I'll also probably increase my blacks back up to where they were. Next, I'm gonna scroll down to my hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, also known as HSL sliders. Basically, what I wanna do here is drop a lot of this color that's right in the top because it's pretty bright. So I'm gonna come down to my luminance and I'm going to drop that yellow luminance. I'm going to drop the blue and aqua luminance as well. And also the orange luminance just to make that color come out a little bit more and then I'll just add a little bit of saturation to each one of those colors too just to make it pop a little bit more. So there we have our finished panorama. If you want more videos that are going to help you with Lightroom click on this playlist right here that's going to take you through several videos on how you can use Lightroom the best for your photography. Thanks so much for watching.